Have you ever noticed the odd markings found on all four corners of old German goods wagons? In fact, on most of continental European wagons. What is the story behind them? Let's go back into the early 1920s. Until then, goods wagons had no air brakes. Every wagon that was equipped with brakes had to be operated manually by some poor soul sitting in the cramped and draughty brakeman's cabins I talked about in my previous video. This labor-intensive practice could only be retired with the advent of air brakes and air pipes and their general introduction for goods trains in the mid-1920s, allowing all brakes of a train to be applied from a single point. As such, it was now possible to fit also wagons without cabins with brakes, which became the standard for new ones, and many formerly unbraked wagons were retrofitted. But not all of them, and certainly not all at the same time. While forming a train, it still had to be made sure that enough brake wagons were present and evenly spaced out. As the brakeman's cabin had now lost its secondary function, however, of indicating a brake wagon, a new way of being able to quickly tell braked and unbraked wagons apart was needed. And that is where the aforementioned markings come into play. At first, you might think, the white markings were intended to improve a wagon's visibility, and in reality they did, but it was not their intention. Sure, the markings were meant to be highly visible, so they could be decoded even from a distance with ease, telling railway workers what brake system a wagon is equipped with, gaining them the name Bremsecken, German for brake corners. In total, there are six different markings, well, seven if you count unmarked wagons as well. By the way, if they had to be applied on light surfaces, like on insulated wagons, the colors were not reverted, but the squares rather boldly outlined in black. Exceptions apply. The first marking is a simple white square, indicating a wagon featuring a pipe, but no brakes. At least no air brake connected to the pipe. It could very well have a handbrake. Wagons still having no pipes were not qualified to receive any markings at all, regardless if they had brakes or not. But for many years the most common marking were two squares indicating a wagon which is not only piped, but also features an actual goods wagon brake, specifically one that conforms to international norms and can therefore be freely used, including abroad. Three squares on top of each other were more prevalent on older wagons and describe a braked and piped wagon whose goods brake is of a non-standard type, therefore limiting its use. Piped, a standard goods brake or a non-standard one. So far so good. But all three of these markings come also in a variant where the lower side of the bottom square is pulled down forming a triangular point. This variant always indicates a goods wagon that can be used in passenger trains. For the brake wagons with either two or three squares, that translates to their air brakes being adjustable for use in either goods or passenger trains. Still divided to standard and non-standard brakes, of course. For piped only wagons, however, it's a bit more complicated. Obviously, you can't adjust a non-existing brake for use in passenger trains. Therefore, a wagon with a single pointed square, which isn't a square anymore, I know, is only equipped with a dedicated air brake for passenger trains, but none for goods trains. Those wagons could be freely used internationally, but for use in goods trains, the brake had to be disconnected from the pipe. As newer goods wagons were built with higher speeds in mind, non-standard brakes being phased out and unbraked wagons pretty much disappearing altogether, more and more goods wagons received the two squares with a pointed bottom one. Ultimately, the markings became more and more obsolete until in 1977 they were dropped altogether. At least almost. While it's not necessary anymore to highlight braked wagons, ones featuring only air pipes still need to be indicated with a single square on each corner to this day. That being said, however, looking for one will probably take you a long time. A small but important detail of goods wagons you had asked me about. What detail about railways would you like to get answered next? With that, a completely unbraked thank you goes to my channel members Dave Heise, Flip Schwip, Kay Frankly and Lukas Ilskens for securing the future of my channel. If you want to become a member yourself or support my art project by getting one of my wallpapers on Gumroad, you can find both links in the video description. See you in the next one, here at Steelbridge Models.